Amazon has finally joined the foundation model competition with the announcement of Nova. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Amazon has had a long and interesting journey when it comes to their relationship with foundation models in the AI space. We've had context to discuss them a couple times in the last week and noted that much of their strategy was formed in reaction to ChatGPT coming out and being, frankly, much better than the version of that that they had planned on releasing themselves. In fact, they took the name that they had been planning to use on their ChatGPT equivalent, which was Bedrock, and turned that into an AWS service to help enterprise customers figure out which models to use. Since then, they've doubled down on their relationship with Anthropic, as well as really focused on their infrastructure play with their Tranium chips. But it appears that they are not content to not be in the foundation model game, as at AWS reInvent this year, the biggest announcement of that event was the unveiling of a new family of proprietary models. Called Nova, the range includes four sizes of LLM, Micro, Lite, Pro, and Premier. Nova Micro is a text-only model described as being optimized for speed and cost. Nova Lite is a low-cost multimodal model capable of quickly analyzing image, video, and text inputs. Nova Pro is described as a highly capable multimodal model with the best combination of accuracy, speed, and cost for a wide range of tasks. And Nova Premier is Amazon's most capable multimodal model designed to excel at, quote, complex reasoning tasks and for use as the best teacher for distilling custom models. The lineup also includes an image generation model, Nova Canvas, and a video generation model, Nova Real. Each is claimed to be state-of-the-art in their respective fields. All of the models other than Nova Premier are now available within the Bedrock model library on AWS, with Premier expected to arrive sometime early next year. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy said, We've continued to work on our own frontier models, and those frontier models have made a tremendous amount of progress over the last four to five months. And we figured, if we're finding value out of them, you would probably find value out of them. We don't know how many parameters these models are, but based on their descriptions, they seem to line up with similar latest generation model families from the leading labs. Context windows are also comparable to rival models, but Amazon promised to deliver an ultra-long 2 million token context window for some models next year. The LLMs all support fine-tuning using text images and videos, as well as model distillation. Canvas, the image model, looks on par with leading models from rival labs, while Real, the video model, feels a bit like a teaser version, only supporting 6-second videos, which take about 3 minutes to generate. Amazon says that a version that can generate two-minute videos is coming soon. Quality appears up to standard in the demo video provided by Amazon. However, the user-generated videos that have come out so far range dramatically from good enough to extremely janky. Coming next in the Nova lineup is a speech-to-speech model expected in Q1 of next year and an any-to-any model expected in mid-2025. The benchmarks appear at first glance to be competitive. Amazon is claiming that Real outperformed Runway's Gen 3 Alpha in A-B testing, achieving a 61% win rate for video quality and a 71% win rate for video consistency. For the language models, Nova Pro seems to be at least competitive with Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4.0, claiming outperformance in some areas. One of the things that I think is important when we talk about benchmarks is that it's probably more valuable to understand these in terms of competitive ranges rather than in terms of exact specifics. And if that's how you take it, Nova Pro is in the class of models that include Claude 3.5 Sonnet, GPT-4.0, etc. Wale Akin Federin, a tech lead at AWS, pointed out an interesting area of outperformance, commenting, One exciting aspect of the newly released Amazon Nova Gen AI models is their impressive performance on agent and multi-agent benchmarks. Offsetting this point, though, one of the areas that Nova Pro seems to be lacking in is in coding benchmarks. AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy ran her own testing on LiveBench, finding Nova Pro was further down the leaderboard. She writes, the benefit of having a benchmark that changes every month is that it can't be gamed. On our latest November challenge, Amazon's Nova scores below Llama 70B and is slightly better than Haiku. Net-net, this model doesn't change the leaderboard significantly, though it seems surprisingly fast. Predictably, Sonnet 3.5 and the O1 line remain on top of the list. One of the more important features, though, which was kind of glossed over, frankly, at reInvent, was how competitive Nova is on price. Nova Micro and Nova Lite are both priced below Gemini 1.5 Flash and GPT-40 Mini, making them the cheapest models available from a major lab. Nova Lite also has the distinction as the cheapest available model with multimodal inputs. Those two models are priced so close together that the differentiation seems to be speed, with Nova Micro about 10% faster than Gemini 1.5 Flash. Nova Lite runs at a similar pace to GPT-40, which is still faster than the rest of the pack. Nova Pro is available at around a third of the cost of either GPT-40 or Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and also positioned as slightly cheaper than Claude 3.5 Haiku with much higher performance scores. The net of all of this is that Amazon's in-house LLMs are now the cheapest available for many use cases. Jerry Liu, the CEO of Llama Index, writes, 
Amazon's Nova should have advertised the cost reduction front and center instead of me having to dig up a hacker news thread. It's a huge value proposition. Nova is an exciting push towards way cheaper models that are comparable to the state of the art in terms of context window, performance, and multimodality. LLMs have come a long way, but a huge issue with using them for repeated loops is cost, especially for multimodal agentic flows. Overall, the biggest takeaway from this announcement, if you're just trying to understand it in a sentence or two, is that Amazon has gone from skipping this generation of LLMs to frankly fully in play with a complete lineup of competitive models. Warren Professor Ethan Mollick summed it up, and then there were six or so. Based on the stats, it looks like Amazon's Nova Pro is a competitive frontier model. This rounds out the GPT-4 Gen 1 models. GPT-4.0, Gemini 1.5, Claude 3.5, Grok 2, Llama 3.2, and maybe three non-US models, Quen, Yi, and Mistral. Another question for me is that given that Jassy is talking about making progress over just the last four to five months, it sort of implies that they've caught up to the other labs since summer, which if that's the case, also lends credence to the growing sense that maybe there really aren't particularly strong moats when it comes to models. The next big group of announcements related to Amazon's Trainium AI chips. Trainium 2 instances are now generally available on AWS for training and inference. The company also announced a new generation of chips, Tranium 3, expected to become available late next year. For the Tranium 2 chips, Amazon is claiming a 4x improvement in speed over the first generation, which frankly saw very little adoption. They boast that Tranium 2 inference can deliver 3x higher token generation throughput on Meta's Llama 405B model compared to offerings available from other cloud providers. In their announcement post, Amazon claims, quote, Tranium 2 offers 30 to 40% better price performance than the current generation of GPU-based EC2 instances presumably referring to NVIDIA's H100s. AWS CEO Matt Garman claimed that Tranium 3 will be twice as fast as the second generation and deliver 40% more energy efficiency. Garman said, Today there's really only one choice on the GPU side, and it's just NVIDIA. We think that customers would appreciate having multiple choices. One big surprise regarding Tranium was a special appearance from Apple Senior Director of Machine Learning and AI, Benoit Dupin. Dupin took the stage to promote Tranium, stating that Apple is currently using the chips to power services like Search and will evaluate the use of the latest generation to pre-train their Apple intelligence models. It's pretty unheard of for Apple to endorse a supplier, particularly in a segment as competitive as cloud. And so people are taking this as a pretty strong vote of confidence. Amazon also announced a gigantic new AI training supercomputer dubbed Rainier. Designed in collaboration with Anthropic, Amazon says the supercluster will deliver 5x the compute that was used for Anthropic's latest training runs. The design is somewhat unique with the cluster spread out across multiple facilities networked together. Usually, training superclusters are housed under one roof as the latency to transport data across the network is a major bottleneck. Amazon claims to have solved this problem with networking technology that they call the Elastic Fabric Adapter. Amazon said in their press release, When completed, it is expected to be the world's largest AI compute cluster reported to date. The current high watermark for completed supercomputers is Elon Musk's Colossus facility, which houses 100,000 NVIDIA H100s. Gotti Hutt, who works with customers at Amazon's chipmaking unit, Annapurna Lab, said that Rainier will contain, quote, significantly more than 100,000 Tranium 2 chips. The cluster is expected to be ready sometime next year. So that is the story. Lots going on on the Tranium side. But the big news is Nova and Amazon being in the foundation model game for real. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.